Can you, Sarah, finish the sentence for me? I was the only one in the room who? Who couldn't have a baby. I'm really glad that you're going to talk about your journey with infertility because no one's ever talked about it on the show before. And it's something um, that I really want to know more about. I want to hear more about it. I want people to talk more about it. Um, so let's just start with what people don't, what do people not know about infertility? Like what toll does it take on you physically, emotionally? Sure. So I think um, it, what, what was surprising to me about infertility was the exhaustion and relentlessness of it. Um, I think that's a lot of it. I think it's such a hidden thing that so many women can be going through and no one knows. And so that part is really challenging. Um, the emotional or the physical toll can look like a lot of different things depending on what stage you're at and what your situation specifics are like. Um, I think the one of the surprises to me was that I still feel like I'm recovering from to some extent is the decision fatigue. It is your it's constant decision making and those decisions all impact your marriage, your finances, your emotional state, your physical state. Like it's just decision after decision that always has some sort of cost associated with it. Um, and that over time, I mean for us it was over the course of um, six-ish years. And that's very, very draining and very exhausting. And, and you're saying it always has a cost associated with it. I know there's tremendous financial costs. Yeah. But then you're also talking about the, the cost yes, on the, your relationship. Yeah. On your, your body. Right. Um, and your mental health. And your mental health. Yeah. And, you know, it, and as, as you're talking, it, it occurs to me that, you know, this is something that people who live um, at or below the poverty line mm -hmm. probably don't even get that choice, right? Yeah. So that's... I'm so glad you brought that up because my thing, having been through this and been through infertility in multiple um, facets, which I'm sure we'll get to, is that it is big business that is designed for rich people. Yeah. And that is, and their infertility clinics will, there's no end to the amount of money that they will take from you. Mm. And there's no limit to how much you can spend in terms of like, there's always more options that always come in the form of thousands of dollars. And so, yeah, if, if you don't have the resource, the financial resources, then you don't get to play that game. And so it's definitely, um, that was something that became harder and harder for me going through that process is yeah. feeling grateful that I had the options that I did, but recognizing that a lot of people don't have those options. Well, I, and I wonder if there'll ever be kind of a movement to bring some kind of equity to it. Yeah, um, there's definitely insurance companies that are starting to step up and cover certain things. I oh, know. good. So I'm up in Seattle and Microsoft, I believe, is one of the first companies um, that has some coverage along in that area. Um, and there's more and more big companies that are starting to like cover IVF and those kinds of things. At the time that we went through everything that we went through, there we didn't have, qualify for anything. Um, yeah. We were self-employed and we just got to pay all the money. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and I, I have, I've had several dear friends, well, I've actually had three dear friends and then several friends that have gone through it, and, you know, it's just, some of them is just to the limit of their bank account. Like, yeah. they would go further, yep. but they can't afford it. Exactly. And then some of them have gone to the limit of their bank, I mean, gone all the way through with no right. limit, but the body gave out. Like, yeah. then they couldn't take it anymore. Right. And it's really hard to know where to draw the line, because yeah. you kind of get to this point of, well, we can just try one more thing, or it's only three more thousand dollars, or ten more thousand dollars, or l like one more round of this, that, or the other thing, and you always think like, if I do that one more thing and that's the thing, then it's worth it. And yeah. so it's really hard to know where to draw that line. Um, and for us, um, for us, it, we ended up, it became increasingly clear to where to draw the line and kind of what we were willing to do, but I will say early on, there was a million things I, th I said I would never do and yeah. expenses I would never incur and I like did all the things. Right. <laughs> so it's right. interesting how your your willingness shifts over time and also if you identify as like a high achiever type A kind of person, which I do, um, this for me was one of the first things I wasn't good at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So there's like this competitiveness to it. To yourself. Yes. Where yeah. you're like, I will figure out how to get an A plus on this. Right. Like hashtag watch me. Yeah. And that I had to really check myself with that and recognize sometimes that that was what was really 
hard for me was that mm -hmm. I felt like I was constantly getting an F on a test, and I'm a girl who never got an F on a test. So.